Excellent. All right, now we're going to move on to another tournament. This is StarCraft, not StarCraft 2, which is still not out. Right. Uh, there will be so obviously a lot of StarCraft 2 content here at the show, but StarCraft, which is, I think, a decade old at this point. People are still playing this game, loving it, and there will be in a StarCraft Invitational Tournament, of course, right? Yeah. That says something about StarCraft. Yeah. When you watch StarCraft on the tournament stage, the UI may seem a little dated, right. but, you know, the gameplay is timeless. It's now been let's get to some of the so brackets long. here. and what, what can we expect here, Kim? So the first matchup, um, Savior versus Beckham, that's a good matchup to, to see. Um, Savior is going to be a big fan favorite. He is from Korea. He is two-time defending champion of BlizzCon. He won last year and the year before. And um, in the interview that he won, he actually told all his fans that he was going to destroy everyone in 2009. So we'll see if he's going to keep his word and um, win again this year. Is so there a is lot of smack talk that happens amongst these players? Actually, no. It's not okay. that common for them to smack wow. talk, but Savior was very common. Confident, and he let it out there. He said he's been destroyed. It's questionable how well he's doing this year, but he's a BlizzCon star. He shines every time he's at BlizzCon, right. so we'll see how he does this year. Now, Savior is one of our players to watch. Who else are you watching in the StarCraft tournament? So, um, also, I, I'm also looking forward to see how Idra, Idra is going to do. So, now, when you watch the StarCraft matches and you listen to the commentators, be aware that they are going to throw out this term called foreigners. And you, sometimes using a foreigner, you think someone who's not from, you know, your country. Right. But not in the case of StarCraft. It, foreigner is a player who is not from Korea. Because gotcha. Korea ha is, has welcomed StarCraft, and there's so many pro gamers in StarCraft. It's such a strong sport there that anybody that is not from Korea is considered a foreigner. Interesting. And I didn't realize that. Yeah. And it, Itra is a foreigner favorite. Okay. In America, he's from right? The, he's from the U.S. Yeah. And he actually trains with Xavier. So he plays with the best. And um, so he's Savior actually trains him so he might be able to beat him, the, the apprentice beating the master? Maybe. Who knows? That would be a nice surprise. But I don't think Savior will let that happen. So keep an eye out for Idra. He surprised a lot of people last year yeah. um, at BlizzCon because he knocked out Yellow in the first round. And it's unheard of that a Korean player does not advance in the second round. They win every first so round. So it could be right? Savior versus Indra at the end of the uh, tournament here for the that final That would be match. a nice surprise. I would love that. All right. That well, we'll have to see. Now, this is all going on today and tomorrow. And if people want to see all the coverage of these tournaments, you can go to BlizzCon.com, but of course we'll be updating you throughout the live broadcast here on DirecTV. Kim, thank you so much. I'll let you get over there to uh, get ready to shoutcast later today. Thank you. Excellent. All right, well, over in the StarCraft area, speaking of StarCraft, is Joe Garcia. Joe, uh, what have you found over there? Hey, guys, we're over here in the StarCraft area. It's pretty crazy. We had people running through the door to get in line to get a hit on one of the computers so they can play the new StarCraft 2. And I'm roaming around and I'm seeing all these crazy yes, people sir. and I happen to bump into Rainer four years out. later. That's right. right. From Rainer with love, babe. So we got Rebel Rainer here. Are you going to be in the costume contest today? That's right. Yep. And do you plan on winning? I don't know. Everyone I don't think I can win, though. Yeah, all right. But we also have a bunch of people roaming around trying to figure out where they're going to go next. So behind us, we want to get you guys in this machine. I'd love to see Kat and Jeff rocking it out in this machine. It's kind of scary. It flips you around and makes you a little nauseous. So we're going to go work the floor and see what people are up to. So back to you guys at the desk. All right, Joe, I'd rock that machine. I think we, we all got to have a little spin in that. A little Whatever bit you later. call it, the, a whirl in that. Yeah. All right, well, we're back here on the main stage as we count down to the opening ceremonies at BlizzCon at the bottom of the hour. You guys are going to see that live and uninterrupted in high definition. But right now, Kat, we have something here on the desk. This is the goodie bag. If you're one of the lucky 26,000 people to be here at BlizzCon, everyone gets one of these great goodie bags. It's one of the perks uh, right. that you get as being a part of BlizzCon. And we've got something here, which is the uh, it's new. very well closed. So let me explain what happened this year. So usually when you go to BlizzCon, you're going to have a bag with a bunch of little Trotskys in it, which is what we saw last year. Right. So this we year, spilled it out on the we table, spilled it out on the table. So this year instead, what we wanted to do, or what Blizzard wanted to do, was provide more of a value to their customers and do something really collectible. And so we have something that is uh, it's called a noob, right. and it is uh, specially designed it's a here. From it's a marine right? from StarCraft, and it uh, comes from Urban Vinyl. I don't know if you're familiar with the Urban Vinyl movement, but there are all these toys that you can get in the store, and a lot of artists actually paint them. And so what we have here is one that was especially designed just for Come BlizzCon. On, well, the thing is, is, he's all tied in there. I'll but figure it out here you while you see talk. That. We gotta see. We gotta see the noob. And, and How do you so, get the noob out? He, oh, you gotta, gotta untie him. In. All right. So these noobs. Now we'll I heard there were three out. artists at Blizzard that exactly. uh, did different noobs, and there are three different versions of noobs. So if you actually go to the store, which we're gonna be doing with later with Joe today, you're right. gonna have three different noobs that are designed exactly or uh, specifically by Blizzard artists. And then what we did is we had a big, or they had a big competition, right. and then 
uh, the three people were their toys were sent off to a toy company and they were reproduced. So it's right. a big honor for so the artist. So that's the Blizzard noob that's going to be all over eBay. I'm sure that's right. very exciting. People are going to get to play with this inside the bag. Now, what else? You know, in past years, there's always been a beta key sometimes in the bag. There but they're is. Not doing, is there one again? No beta code no this beta year. Code. All right. This year, um, it's just a pet card. So there is a little um, a little Murloc and a marine suit, and it's called Grunty. So it's definitely homage to everything StarCraft this year. Excellent. Well, speaking of the noob, uh, we actually have a really interesting behind-the-scenes feature about how they put these together. You're going to meet Corey Jones from Blizzard and some of the artists who actually created the special noobs that are only going to be at the BlizzCon store. So let's go behind the scenes, the making of the noob at BlizzCon 2009. Uh, one of the great things about Blizzard is that we keep a very open canvas when it comes to licensed goods. We look for the coolest, best uh, opportunities out there and make sure we create stuff that our fans are going to really fall in love with. One of the things that we looked at recently was urban vinyl. The urban vinyl movement is a, a toy movement where people take a, a, a canvas essentially made out of a toy shape and then they have artists paint different iterations on this uh, canvas and you get lots of really cool, very collectible toys. And we thought this would be a great thing for Blizzard. And what we did was we worked with an in internal artist, who I think you're going to meet in a second, and made this form, which is the Marine from StarCraft. Hell, it's about time. So this became what we're calling a noob. And we're going to have other noobs, too. So this is a, a very cool product. And uh, to make it even cooler, what we did was we made 250 of them, and we did an internal lottery at Blizzard. And anyone who wanted to actually decorate one of these noobs could enter the lottery. If they won, they got a blank one. Then they could decorate it, and we had a contest, and we voted for the top three. And the good news is, at BlizzCon this year, as an exclusive, you're going to have a chance to buy a version of each of those top three winners and a blank one, so you can actually decorate your own. How cool is that? And now that I've told you about the new concept, let's go and meet the winners. I'm John Buckus, one of the animators on World of Warcraft. You are not prepared! I'm one of the winners of the noob contest. We had, well, one of three winners. We had a, a contest to design and paint these guys. I chose Ragnaros. You know, I've never had a toy or anything, actually anything of mine go on the market besides the games. So I'm actually, I hope everybody likes it and thinks I did you know, the justice to the Warcraft guy. I'm Oliver Chipping. I'm a 3D artist at Blizzard Entertainment, and I'm working on Diablo 3. <laughs> uh, recently won a contest for Blizzard's new toy, the Noobs, and this is my noob. It's, uh, his name is Goulash, and um, he was inspired when I was first playing World of Warcraft as a young Horde player. Um, this is the first guy that killed me a lot of times repeatedly. So I, I grew a, a earnest hatred for him, and um, out of that grew eventually a love and a bond between us. So some of the initial sketches I did on just a basic blank layout, I took my inspiration for this guy and just tried to apply it across a 3D object, which is a little bit of a difficult translation. but. Um, I, I think it pulled it off pretty nicely and got a final product out of it. My name is Julien Lefebvre. I'm a 3D artist at Blizzard Entertainment. I'm working on Diablo 3, and I'm one of the winners of the Noob Contest. And this is Murloc Madness. At BlizzCon, the uh, blank version will be available too, so people will be able to buy those ones or the blank one and try themselves new, nice design and share it with the rest of the uh, community of Blizzard fans, for sure. So before you go, I wanted to show you one more thing. Uh, one of the great things about BlizzCon is the goodie bag. Everyone loves the goodie bag. And this year, we've done something a little different. We've actually created a very cool, large-scale collectible to put into the goodie bag. And that's going to be the Rainer Noob. Now, the only way to get the Rainer Noob is going to be uh, to actually have attended BlizzCon. So this is hyper-exclusive. And you can see we've included the uh, BlizzCon logo on his armor. We've got a little WoW call-out, a little Diablo 3 call-out. So it really does bring all of our Blizzard brands together into one really super cool collectible. We're uh, very excited about this, and I think everyone at the show is going to love it. And that's about it. So uh, why don't we get back to BlizzCon 2009?
All right, and that was the story of the noobs, and we've got, I finally got that out of the package there. Yeah. There's the brand new noob that people will be able to get here at BlizzCon, but if you guys are not here at BlizzCon, you're watching at home, people are still going to get something special, right, Kat? They are. So everyone who's watching this at home is going to be able to get the in-game pet, which is Grunty. It's a murloc in a marine suit. It's very cool. And of course, we're going to be on IGN. They're going to be counting down the top 10 Blizzard games, and in while you're sitting at home watching the show, you can browse over there and check that out. One other thing you guys can do on the internet is contact us via Twitter. We have a lot of guests that are coming up on the show. Mike, when he finishes with the opening ceremony, he's going to come right here to the BlizzCon Direct TV desk to answer our questions, but we also want to include you guys as part of the Blizzard community. So if you guys have questions, you can Twitter the questions to us. It's at Jeff Keeley, which is my name, at Cat, Cat, Hunter, at Cat Hunter, and also at the DTV. So we'll be checking Twitter. If you guys have questions for Mike, send them to us right now and we'll be able to look them over and we'll ask them to Mike and get your name on the show as well. We uh, want you to be a part of the show as well. It's not just us asking questions. We want to hear what you have to say. Absolutely. Now, out in the field, Joe Garcia continues to traverse all over BlizzCon 2009. Joe, where are you right now? I thought the gaming station in StarCraft was crazy. I was wrong. I'm over here in Hall A at the BlizzCon store, and there are people in line waiting to buy some of the most crazy things here. I have people People from Australia that came all the way down here and they're here to buy some stuff. What are you here to buy? I'm here to buy the soft Murloc plush toys. You can't get them anywhere else. And you came from where? We came from the west coast of Australia. We came from Perth. So they've trekked it pretty far to get some stuff. What are you guys here to buy? T-shirt. T-shirt. A couple steins, maybe some books, some noobs. Pretty cool. You gotta get all three of them and the blank all of them, one. All of them. But we have to check it out. There's some crazy stuff in the case. We have the poker set, which is supposed to be the hot item. Um, we also have the art book, which is um, the new art for the World of Warcraft. So a lot of people are anticipating a purchase on that. And then for the contest that you guys had for the noobs, we have the three noobs available here for purchase, also the blank one. So we have a lot of people ready and revved up. They have their order forms in their hand, they're limited to five per item. Item. So they're ready to go shop in the BlizzCon store. They'll wait here all day. Back to you guys at the desk. All right, well, that looks pretty fun over there, and I'm it sure is? there's a huge line because these things sell out pretty quickly, right? So I don't know if you realize this, but um, the products that are sold in the store are only available to people at BlizzCon, and there's months and months of preparation that are spent simply to people have items in that, that right? store. It's 1,100 square feet in the back of that. Wow. And so, how many items are going to be in the store? Do you have I believe sense? they have around 60 different items in the store this year, and you're only going to be able to buy them at BlizzCon. So um, it's a really exciting part of the BlizzCon experience. All right, well, uh, people are going to be picking up those items. You'll probably be able to find them on eBay if uh, you want to. Although I guess exactly. a lot of people will probably hold on to these things because they mean a lot to these they, Blizzard fans. They'll hold on to them, but uh, check eBay in a couple hours. You'll <laughs> see it. Don't worry. People always trying to make a quick buck. Well, Absolutely. we're just uh, less than five minutes away now from the opening ceremony with yes. Mike Morheim, who's going to be on stage. And we talked a little bit before about what to expect. Uh, you know, there's rumors, obviously, of a brand new World of Warcraft expansion pack. Cataclysm sure. is a term that Blizzard tried to trademark uh, about a month ago that leaked out online. People we are did. wondering what that might be, so hopefully we'll hear news on that. We will. Uh, StarCraft 2, not expecting a lot of news because uh, there were a lot of single-player previews that just came out last week online. There was a right. new cinematic, new footage. But one thing I think a lot of fans are wondering about is the beta of StarCraft 2. The game was originally scheduled to come out this holiday season. On August 5th on the Activision earnings call, they announced right. that the game was not going to come out this year. It's going to be delayed until 2010. And the beta was already supposed to be out by now, exactly. so we're wondering where it is. We're going to have to ask. If Mike doesn't address in the opening service, Ceremonies. He's going to have to sit right over there afterwards and tell us what the deal is with StarCraft 2. We'll find out. And I think there are some StarCraft 2 announcements that uh, may happen tomorrow. A uh, little bird told me you might want to stay tuned. There may be some surprises okay. tomorrow on the StarCraft 2 lore panel. All right. So folks may want to tune in for that. Absolutely. And we'll have that uninterrupted on DirecTV. Now, finally, Diablo 3. Let's talk a bit about that. It is playable here it at is. Gamescom in Germany. They showed a brand new desert stage. There was a lot of talk online about that. Right. Uh, one question that I think a lot of people have is what is the new class going to be? Are they going to reveal a new class here at BlizzCon? What do you think? It's absolutely a new class. That's been their pattern over the last few years. That's what we're here to see. It's just a matter of who it's going to be. Any predictions? What do you think? 
Um, you know, we've already have a really we had a really cool uh, class last year that was more magical in nature. Right. So this year, I think it's going to be more strength based or maybe more speed based. We'll see. We'll have to see. It could all go down in moments here, Kat, on uh, Direct TV. So we'll have big announcements on all three of those games. And there are also 1,700 computers that are throughout the halls of BlizzCon it's here for people to actually the play covered. these games, right? It's amazing. Like, I've never seen so many computers in one room except for maybe QuakeCon. It's absolutely now, amazing. Now, the, the BlizzCon members actually get to come here. They get to, you can see over there, actually, people are playing Diablo 3 yes. at the side of the stage. And they get to basically line up. They get to sit down and play the game for, what is it, 20, 30 minutes? Yeah, I think it's about 15, 20 minutes. Okay. You get a good chance. You, there are several missions that are available to them, and they're able to play through it. And then at a certain time, of course, they have to get up. But you're right. able to on the Diablo on the Diablo uh, stage this year. You're able to play multiplayer. So if you come with four of your friends.